It is a significant increase, but I think that it's going to pay off. Really, it's going to be a, an asset for our community. We're doubling the number of sheets of ice for hockey, both varsity hockey and youth hockey with this facility. The West Fargo School Board makes a unanimous decision to move forward with a new hockey facility that would accommodate both West Fargo and Cheyenne varsity and junior varsity hockey teams. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Mike has the evening off. The money for the facility was approved by voters in the fall as part of the $98.1 million bond referendum. Tonight, the board approved the new design that would cost $14.6 million, an increase of about $2 million. Valley News Team's Yovana Simic tells us what this new rink means to the community. I think we have to just pony up and, and get, get the job done and get the facility built. West Fargo Public School officials came to an agreement that a new hockey rink needs to be built. We were able to do that by uh, adding a few more square feet, reconfiguring where the locker rooms are located, and the board appreciated and liked that plan well enough that they were willing to free up dollars that have been saved in the other projects and some of the contingency dollars um, to go forward with that plan. Board members say this rink is a necessity since the community has a shortage of ice and the city of West Fargo keeps growing. The thing that the board really wanted accomplished uh, in the back to the drawing board phase was to make sure that this facility has the capacity um, to host for practice as well as competition games uh, two or more hockey teams. The updated design features more locker room space as well as a bigger seating area, a facility that is going to cost more than two million dollars over budget. But in the end, board members believe it will better the sport in West Fargo. I think we have to plan for the future. We know the hockey is not going away. If we did, we wouldn't be building this facility in the first place. A rink that will be vital for the growing hockey community. In West Fargo, Yovana Simic, Valley News Live. Board members say they hope to start construction by the end of the summer. Two people have been arrested in connection with a hit-and-run crash that killed a 10-year-old girl in Aiken County, Minnesota, June 10th. 44-year-old Stephen Lee Meyer and 45-year-old Deborah Lynn Chandler, both of Hastings, Minnesota, are the two who were arrested. Kaylin Donovan of Lake Park was hit and killed while walking on Highway 18 near Mille Lacs Lake. The Minnesota State Patrol and the Aiken County Sheriff's Office are still looking for information on a second deadly hit and run crash that happened on Highway 47. If you have any information in either case, you're asked to call uh, Minnesota State Patrol. Eight days after the Orlando shooting, senators in Washington have rejected Democratic and Republican gun control proposals. Today's vote was prompted by last week's 14-hour-long filibuster by Senate Democrats following that massacre inside the Pulse nightclub. Both parties offered plans to keep terrorists from getting firearms and improve the current system of background checks for gun purchases. But all proposals fell short of the 60 votes needed to move ahead in the legislative process. We reached out to our local senators. Here's what Minnesota Senator Al Franken had to say before he voted. Not acting now would be a disservice to families across the country who have had a loved one killed or injured as a result of gun violence. And North Dakota Senator Heidi Heitkamp said we need to reach a bipartisan compromise that truly aims to address the issue of keeping guns out of the hands of potential terrorists while protecting Americans' constitutional rights. One of the four proposals rejected was supported by the National Rifle Association. The Fargo Police Department wants to make sure you know about a high-risk sex offender who could be living right in your backyard. Police say this man, 55-year-old Eugene Hinson, is living near Lindenwood Park Campground. Hinson is homeless and is staying in a wooded area near 1905 Roger Maris Drive. He was convicted in Cass County District Court for luring a minor by computer in 2011. The victim was a 16-year-old female. To get a better idea of where exactly he's staying, we have a map at valleynewslive.com. Simply look for this story. A proposal for an $8 million project 
to house the homeless in Grand Forks is moving forward with a project called Housing First. Tonight, the Grand Forks City Council approved moving ahead with the project with certain conditions. The Housing Authority wants the city to give them land next to the police station, which is currently a skate park, to build an $8 million Housing First project. It would be funded by federal loans and grants. Housing First is a concept for um, the chronically homeless, to end chronic homelessness. The proposal on the table now is a 42 unit project that includes space for supportive services on site. Services such as addiction counselors to make sure people stay on track when they get back in the workforce. The city wants to make sure neighbors get their say and look for a possible relocation of the skate park. And we'll keep you updated on this project. A sidewalk in West Fargo was so overgrown you could hardly see it and nothing was being done to fix the issue. After a viewer sent us a picture, our whistleblower team went to work. Neighbors in the area of 49th Terrace West and Mulberry Lane say they avoid this stretch of sidewalk because of bees and that it's a mosquito trap. West Fargo City Code says no grasses or plants are allowed to grow longer than eight inches, and these were more than four feet high in spots. Calls to the property owner were finally returned late this afternoon, and when our cameras went back, the lot was being mowed. An 84-year-old Fergus Falls woman made headlines years ago, and she hasn't stopped inspiring people since. After teaching for 42 years, she retired and went back to college. We interviewed Yvonne Martz over 20 years ago when her story drew national attention. Tonight, Valley News Team's Nicole Johnson shows us how that interview sparked even bigger things. A lot of women, I'm afraid, don't follow their heart. This is Yvonne Martz, more commonly known as that accordion lady. She's got kids, grandkids, and even great-grandkids. And at 84, she's still working. This one goes to Grand Forks. That's an old, really old one. Martz is one of the few women who takes apart accordions, figures out what's wrong, and puts them back together. Not heard of. That's why she got so much attention when she quit teaching and went back to college again. More women should be understanding that they can do anything they want to. And because of all that attention, Martz is now fixing accordions for people all over the country. And the air has to. She's gained multiple contracts, including Fargo Parks, and has met all kinds of people. There's a fellow from Florida that still calls every once in a while. The interview we did with Martz years ago caused something unexpected. I saw your story on TV and I called the TV station and got your name and number and, and I'm just sure we're related. And as it turns out, her mother and my father-in-law were brother and sister. The woman over the phone sent these pictures. Pictures that finished a family history book Martz was working on. It was pretty cool. 20 years ago, Martz followed a dream. And she's still dreaming. You can never be ashamed of having done your best. So, that's how I live. <laughs> Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. In addition to writing her own music, Martz has written several books. One of them is about her philosophy on life, where every entry starts with to be a woman. You won't find it on any shelves, but Martz says she will make you a copy if you ask. Nearly 5,000 Alina nurses in the Twin Cities area went on strike today. The dispute is over Alina's effort to switch union nurses to the same health insurance plans as more than 300,000 other Alina employees and their family members. It carries lower monthly premiums but higher out-of-pocket costs. Today, striking nurses made claims of delays in patient care and units being closed, while 1,400 fill-in nurses worked during the strike. Alina leaders say that's not true. The strike is scheduled to end on Saturday, and the nurses say they hope their week off the job will send a message about fair bargaining. Alina says it doesn't want to talk again until the nurses are ready to negotiate. Young Star Trek actor Anton Yelchin, or rather Anton Yelchin, who played Chekhov in the more recent Star Trek movies, was found dead at his home early yesterday morning. And how the actor died is making network headlines everywhere. NBC Nightly News says his 2015 Jeep Grand Cherokee rolled down the driveway and pinned him against a mailbox and a fence. It turns out the 2015 Jeep Cherokee is actually under a major recall. There have been hundreds of complaints of these vehicles either slipping out of park 
or rolling when a driver wasn't expecting it.